receiving a work request to repair an electronic flow or pressure transmitter. The first order of business is to comply with the local plant work procedures. After locating the transmitter, we will determine whether the trouble is internal to the transmitter or external. In order to have a symptom, we will assume our transmitter is suspected of reading about half the true value. This lesson will deal entirely with the transmitter itself and the transmission system. Impulse lines and associated problems have been covered elsewhere. Back to our low reading transmitter. If it is in a control loop, the control should be placed on manual. Ascertain that the transmitter zero is correct. If the readout is still questioned, locate the control center cubicle where the transmitter wires are terminated. They will not all be the same. Measure the DC supply voltage to the transmitter. We are measuring across terminals 1 and 3 of the input module for this Veritrack loop. The voltage should be 24 volts DC for most 4 to 20 milliamp transmitters. For the Foxboro 10 to 50 milliamp transmitter, the DC supply should be 65 to 90 volts. If there is zero voltage at the terminal strip, it is a good indication that a fuse is blown. If the DC voltage is normal at the control center terminals, our trouble will be in the signal wires to the transmitter. Or the transmitter itself. Disconnect the signal wires at the transmitter and measure the DC voltage for the 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter. The meter should read 24 volts. It should be 65 to 90 volts for the 10 to 50 milliamp transmitter. When the DC voltage is normal in the control center and there is no voltage or a different one of the transmitter, there is something wrong with the signal wires. To test the signal wires, first remove the DC power from the transmitter loop. Disconnect the signal wires at the control center terminal. And at the transmitter. Check the resistance between the two wires.
check the resistance between each wire and ground. All resistance values should be one megohm or more. A continuity check can be made by attaching a jumper across the two wires at one end and checking for continuity with an ohmmeter at the other end. The ohms reading will vary with the size and length of the two signal wires. If the signal leads are bad, they will have to be replaced by spares or new leads. Normally, spares are provided between the field junction boxes and the control center. When the DC voltage is the same in the field as it is in the control center, and a malfunction persists, it is most likely to be in the transmitter. A defective transmitter can more conveniently be repaired in a shop. However, some of the following shop checks and repairs can certainly be performed in the field. Decisions on where the work is to be done are to be dictated by the local plant policy. To remove the transmitter, remove the power from the transmitter loop. Disconnect and tape the signal leads at the transmitter. Disconnect process piping and take out the transmitter. Now work exercise number one in your workbook. In the shop, connect the 24 volt DC to the positive and negative terminals on the amplifier. This instrument is provided by Veritrack for the purpose of simulating the primary cell of their transmitter. The four numbers here, 3, 4, 5, and 6, allude to the same numbers on the amplifier terminal board. The simulator will furnish 0%, 100%, and approximately 50% input signals. It is not to be used as a calibration tool. Disconnect the measuring cell wires and connect the cell simulator to the amplifier by connecting like number to like number. With the simulator selector set at zero, the transmitter zero should be adjustable to four milliamps. The output can be measured by using the zero position on the null meter. With the selector set at 100, the transmitter span should be adjustable to 20 milliamps output. The null meter should be in the 100% position. The 50% setting provides an approximate 50% input check. The amplifier output should read approximately 50% of span.
The 50% selection also gives a quick check on the approximate linearity of the transmitter. If desired, a milliammeter can be connected across terminals 10 and 11 for reading the transmitter output. If the transmitter does not respond to the cell simulator, the amplifier is defective and should be replaced. If the transmitter responds correctly to the primary cell simulator, and still will not perform when the amplifier is reconnected, The trouble is in the measuring cell, and it will have to be replaced. Without the cell simulator, the primary sensor can be checked by measuring the resistance of each cell wire to the transmitter body. Each wire should show higher than one megohm resistance. Use this table for checking wire-to-wire -wire resistance. It is in the Veritrack instruction manuals. In either case, whether the measuring cell or the amplifier is replaced, the transmitter will have to be recalibrated before returning to service. Now work exercise number two in your workbook.